So the question is, is mathematics really useful for daily life or is it just something that they made you learn in school and it's not really useful? It's just a waste of time. You have to learn Pythagoras theorem, you have to learn like geometry, you have to solve equations and learn about all these things and all these theorems. And you can say a similar thing of physics and many of the things that you learn in school. So you learned all these things. Are, is there any usefulness to say learning math and physics in real life. So if I'm walking down the street, am I going to use like Pythagorean theorem or something or not? So I think there's a few things to say about this. First of all, is mathematics really useful in real life or not? If you learn anything, it will structure your mind. So if I learn about psychology, it will color the way I look at the world. I will start looking at people and try to analyze them versus if I never even uh, thought about psychology, I'll just take people at their face value or something like that and you won't be sort of thinking what is under the hood. Similarly, if you learn math or physics, you're also going to be looking under the hood when you see things. You're going to see why did this happen and why did that happen and what you apply it to might not be the same problems that you learned in physics. So you might not be interested in say like a gas expanding and like using that kind of stuff. You might not be in a career where you're like an engineer or something like that. So you won't be using it directly but you will be using it indirectly. So anything you learn is going to structure your mind. And so when you learn physics or mathematics, you're going to start looking at the world in a certain way. You have a certain kind of toolkit that you can look at the world with. And it's more like, you know, you start to break things down into elements and study how the elements influence each other or think about that. So you're going to have an intuition, a different intuition when you look at the world, when you study these kinds of fields. Of course, I can say this about any field. If you study like I said, psychology or science or uh, literature or anything like that is going to structure the way you look. If I studied more literature, I would maybe look at people and think about their emotions that they're going through and think of kind of what story are they living at this moment. Okay, so the second thing to say about this is that mathematics is really important in our world. It's basically everything around us is running on that. So without that knowledge, we would not be running this society or this civilization. So it really is a key player in the world. If you want to make a computer game, you have to know mathematics or somebody on your team has to know mathematics because you need to basically be able to simulate the physics of objects during the game. So even in computer games, for example, let's say you're trying to make a game like a racing game. I tried to make some of these games and there is physics and engineering in those when you're trying to simulate the car. If you want the car to really look like it's moving like a real... You, if you want the player to have the experience of a real car, you might put in elements of a physically realistic simulation so the car moves in a way that is reasonable. You have to put a resistance, you have to study how the engine transforms the torque into the wheels, and you have to understand the, the friction and the on the street, is it going to be like, is it raining or is it not raining? And you can just play with those things. You need to understand physics to do that. And you also need to understand math to be able to do these things. Even if you're trying to make like an animation movie, you also have to, if you want to make it look realistic, you also have to simulate the physics there. Okay? And basically most things like the, if you want to make a computer, if you're like a, an investor, you also have to do some kind of math to predict things and so you, you use a lot of statistics, you have some kind of model in the world, so already basically the stock market, like the player in the stock, players in the stock market are already computers and not people, so they're, these computers are doing basically math to be, be able to do these transactions. It's a key player in the world, okay? But like with most things, like humans learn to basically uh, division of labor. So not everyone has to learn it, even though it's a key player in the world. Some people have to learn it a lot because they need to be able to make things with it. And some people really don't need it that much in their life. So with this point, we're saying that, okay, it is a key player, at least some people have to learn it, but maybe not everyone. So is there really an advantage for people, for the rest of the people who are not really doing it as a career? Do they really need to learn it? Well, then you might start to wonder, well, if an insurance company uses math to, so, or like, yeah, if an insurance company uses math 
to be able to know how much to give people and how much to charge them and how to extract money from the system. So they use a lot of math and statistics to be able to do that. So why can't you do something like similar to that in your life? And the answer, I think, which is why isn't math really useful to people in general in their lives? Like you learned Pythagorean theorem, but you didn't really use it. Actually, there's one piece of math that I use all the time when I'm walking to the anywhere. I don't just walk on the street, uh, on the sidewalk. Sometimes I walk through the grass because the shortest point between any two lines is a between any two points is a straight line. So I always take advantage of that and just go straight through. But in general, I don't go around trying to anything I do. Okay, like how can I really solve uh, my problems with math? So I don't do that even though in my job in my research i do a lot of math and i solve problems mathematically and i appro like approach it from that perspective but in my real life i don't and the reason is it's actually really hard the world is very complex so it's very difficult to get like a mathematical to describe it mathematically accurately because there's a lot of uncertainties and you don't know exactly how to model this problem in front of you so let's say you want to go from here to the supermarket and there's like many many branches many many ways that you could take the the street keeps branching and you keep you always have to make decisions so this problem you can't solve because uh, there's many a lot of options for you to go and you need to find the one that has the shortest path or the one that is most like uh, has the most beautiful scenery in it and this problem you can solve it, but actually a computer can. And that's why you are already using math in your daily life in your phone and your GPS. If, you, if I want to say I want to go from here to somewhere and the phone just calculates for me, like if you're using Uber, the phone calculates for you what is the shortest, like it calculates the fastest way for you to get the Uber and get on and calculates for you the path that you should take. So this is all math that you're using in your daily life, except you, you just use a computer to do it. You don't have to do it yourself. And this is another thing that I think is going to be important in the future. Like right now, there's a lot of things that you learn at school, like how to integrate or how to take a derivative or how to solve this equation or that equation. But in my research, I don't actually use the methods that I learn directly all the time. I actually just use a computer. You can say to the computer, here's differential equation, solve it. Sometimes it's more difficult than that, but sometimes you just have to tell it what the equation is and it gives you a solution. So, in your life, maybe as technology advances and you have maybe more augmented computing like moving around with you, then you can just actually solve these things on the fly. Like, you already have a GPS system or like a Google Maps that tells you how to do it, how to go somewhere, but maybe you can start to move, or, like, move around these things like uh, your computer will have some sort of mathematical models that you can play with and it will solve these equations for you and determine uh, an outcome for you. So maybe you can start to act like an insurance company. An insurance company can actually model the world because it has a lot of resources and it has a lot of mathematicians. So it can actually make predictions about the world and see what are the risks and what are the benefits if I give you this much or if I take the, charge you that much. So companies have those resources because they have a lot of computers and they have uh, a lot of mathematicians. But maybe in the future you can have something like that where you can say, okay, well, I want to, say, maximize the number of people that I meet. And you want to also give it some constraints, like I want to meet people in this age, I want to meet people who fit my... Uh, that fits my personality and things like that and you can start to actually play with model, models like that and it will give you solutions. My point is one of the reasons why math isn't useful in your life is because it's very complicated and like even me when I even though I use it in my job it's hard, harder to use it in my life because to solve just a little problem like just a simple problem of like say an oil droplet collapse colliding with water like just a simple thing that's happening you need like a giant research project to do that or some it's a research problem that is not easy and so you can't always do that in your life but if you did you would benefit and maybe in the future when you can augment yourself maybe we would be doing more math and i think because right now like i said in my in my research i don't always have to solve the problems myself i just need to know 
what this thing means. For example, I just need to know what is a derivative. A derivative is just like, it's a simple concept, but when people first learn it, because it's just like, how much does this quantity change when I change this one, right? So it's like, it's saying that if the clock ticks one second, how much does my position move? Like the car is here at initially, then the car is here after one second. This distance is the change. And to get the derivative, you just divide these out. So anyways, it's a simple concept, but it's sometimes for people who are not comfortable doing the algebra, they give them like in school these problems that they have to solve. And like they get lost in the details of the problem and forget what a derivative is. They forget what this thing means and where you can use it and what physical problems that face you or what actual problems that face you that you can use this tool to solve those problems with. They don't show you these kinds of aspects. Instead, you're focused on the details of calculation. But nowadays, you don't have to do those yourself because a computer can do them. And all you need to do is be able to use these things. Now you can work at a more abstract level. You can take the solution of the equation that the computer gives you and use it. But what you have to do is just know what those things are. Like what's a derivative, what's an integral, what's a differential equation, what's a matrix. You can tell a computer what to do and it will do it for you. So that's one thing. The point is math is already a key player in the world, but the reason why it's not really useful in your life because it's actually very hard to use it. But if you did, you might get some more advantage. And maybe we will be doing that in the future when we're more augmented. I hope this is useful for you and see you next time.